Hi, I'm Nadia Freeman with Rockstone Sessions and I'm here with William Fitzsimmons. William, it's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm very surprised that you would say that. It's not written on the paper. Hush, don't talk about my notes. Um, how are you today? I'm really well. I'm well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to the Netherlands. We're really excited that you're here. Thanks. Yeah, I just rolled in a, a couple hours ago. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. I, it's been a couple years since I was in Europe, actually, and it, um, I, I knew I missed it, but I didn't, I didn't realize how much I missed it. It's, it's, it's totally different in very good ways. We're, we're super excited to have you here. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about your music. Um, I've been looking a lot at your videos on YouTube today and in the last couple of days and reading the comments underneath. And there are so many people who say, oh my gosh, his music helped me through a, a difficult divorce or a difficult time, or it really, really means something to me. What, what do you think it is about your songs and your lyrics that really resonates with people? Um, they're super depressing. <laughs> and so when people are depressed, it, uh, no, it's, um, it's a really simple thing. It's a really simple concept it, um, that a, a lot of times we don't think about it, but it's just, in, in counseling terminology, we call it universality. And it's just the idea that when, um, whenever you sit down and experience someone else's emotions, whether they're, you're talking to them or, or whether you're in you know, actual therapy or whether it's through music or you know, art or something, um, it makes you feel better. And it doesn't make any sense. But just knowing that you're not alone, that, that someone else felt that same way at some point, um, it's kind of curative, it's kind of therapeutic. Um, and um, I mean, I, p I picked up on, on that really early. I think that's actually kind of the, the reason why, I'm, why people started to like my music was just because it was really honest and it was super emotional. And, um, you know, same reason why some people don't like it for that, for that exact same thing. But um, yeah, but I love that quality of it. And I, 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 I sort of cherish that. And I, I don't ever want to lose that when I'm writing. You, you have this very honest streak in your music. Well, I mean, that's what it's all about, the honesty and being very candid. But it also makes you very vulnerable. You're sharing some very, very deep emotions and some very difficult experiences. Do you find that difficult? Or how, how do you cope with that in, in performing and writing? No, it's really, it's very natural. I was raised um, by a, a super emotional, dramatic, kind of histrionic mother. It was really wonderful, though, very warm and... But um, just you could say anything. There's nothing kind of out of bounds, nothing taboo. And um, she, you know, some people find that really strange and you know, kind of uncomfortable. But for us, it was just sort of the, the family milieu. Um, and com you know, coming from, I came from the you know psychology world, sort of career-wise, and that's what you do. That's the grist of nine to five. Is you're talking about people wanting to jump off bridges and hearing voices in their head. So you get really comfortable with it and. And it gets, honestly, it gets to the point where I'm, I prefer that kind of stuff usually. You know, you get sort of uncomfortable whenever it's a little more shallow and people are talking about the weather all the time. Um, I like talking about the weird, you know, kind of freaky stuff. It's, um, it's just, it's more interesting, I guess. So, I mean, we're in the middle of a quite big dramatic storm here in the Netherlands at the moment. So we're not, we're not going to hear a, a stormy song from you anytime soon. No, no, I don't, no, I don't think so. And that's just fine. I, I mean... If I always, I'm not one of those, you know, those weirdos that always talks about like super sad shit. That's like awful. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, life is great. I mean, life is a lot of fun too. Um, but, uh, but I don't, I tend to not gravitate towards people that never want to talk about serious things. You know, they're, they're always crack a joke whenever, you know, that serious topic comes up or, you know, if you start to talk to me about how you're feeling, they kind of, they, you know, they shut up or they change the subject or something. So, um, you know, life, life is really funny, but it also kind of matters, too. So I think it's good to spend a little bit of time in both those worlds. So the songwriting and performing is quite a cathartic experience for you, in a way? It is, yeah, yeah. But it's, this, it's cathartic in the same way that life is. When I perform, I, um, I, I make an effort to wear the, the exact same clothes that I wear at home. Um, I mean, maybe you can tell, but I'm a pretty snappy, pretty snappy. It cannot be denied. And, and congratulations on an extremely splendid beard. I mean, so splendiferous, much. I would say, actually. I, you're, the, you're literally the first person that's ever made a, <laughs> made a comment about it. So I can, I'm very original. It's really surprising <laughs> to hear. No, thanks. Um, yeah, no, I, um, yeah, but performance to me is, um, just because of the music that I'm doing, I think it's best when it's just really honest. So, you know, sometimes my... Sometimes I'm in like a really weird, I haven't taken my, my Prozac before the show 
kind of mood. That's literally, I haven't taken my Prozac before the show. And, and so, you know, but I prefer it just to be really honest and laid out there. And that, that's what's cathartic to me, is not having to play a role, but just getting to kind of be myself. And um, some nights it's awesome, and some nights it's not awesome. And um, yeah, I think it, it helps me. And I've, I've heard, you know, um, that there, there are some people that um, they not only enjoy it, but I think they get something rewarding out of it too. I think that's the thing about your music, people really respond to it. Um, we only have a few minutes, I can see your, uh, your, <laughs> your manager in the background waving at me. Um, I just wanted to ask two more questions. One is, um, your album The Sparrow and Crow was written in quite a tumultuous personal time for you. Um, and then you took a bit of a break and then you decided to come back with your, your next um, album, which I think is Gold in the Shadow. Um, what, what was it about that time that made you think, yeah, now's the time, I'm ready to come back, I'm ready to write music, I'm ready to share that with people? Um, I wasn't. I wasn't at all, and that's why I'm, I'm not, that's why I have bad associations with that record, actually. Uh, I know, but I mean, it's a good question. I, I wasn't, I wasn't ready to, to do it again, and um, I had, it was a really odd period, because I was having like a lot of success with that, with that record, with The Sparrow and the Crow, and, um, you know, the whole thing felt kind of icky, because it was, you know, because it was a very personal, and it was a very, serious kind of thing and um and there was people around me that were encouraging me to capitalize on the success side of it and maybe not to process the other side of it enough and so that the, the whole record the golden shadow record i'm still proud of a lot of it but um you know um i, I wanted to i kind of had to dump a lot, out a lot of that stuff and sort of start over with the new one um i didn't want to take those those feelings along with me you know kind of in perpetuity um, it's totally music is it is an art and it is a business and you're lying if if you think it's not both of those things but whenever you're letting the business side um, intrude too much on the the other side um, it gets kind of ugly it gets nasty and maybe even if it's just internally but you know I I would rather I don't want to be the kind of guy that is like sleeping on a on a yacht but has ulcers because he feels so shitty about what he's done you know I'd rather you know, have a nice little little garden in the backyard or something like that and, you know, drink a halfway expensive cup of coffee or something, but feel good about myself, I guess, you know. Um, sorry, I'm being distracted. It's a super weird dream that I want to have. I, I think it's $1 quite... dollar cup of coffee, not four, not two, just right in the middle. It's the whole Goldilo Goldilocks thing, isn't it? You know, not too expensive, not too cheap, yeah. in the middle, just right. Right, right. <laughs> Anyway, last question, because you really are about to be dragged off. Um, the reason um, we're here and you're here is um, you've got a new album coming out in February um, called Gold, I believe. So please tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you're welcome, first of all, for the new record, I should say. Yeah. Um, no, it's... Um, I'm... It's hard to explain. I mean, how do you explain... Let me, des let me, describe, the, let me describe the color yellow to okay. you. Here's what it's like. Um, it's um, it's another really honest record. It's really personal. I like to think it's not really too much of a departure, to be honest. It's it's kind of in a similar vein as a lot of the other music is that I've done. Um, I got to work with um, Chris Walla, who's one of my favorite musicians and human beings in the in the world. Um, I'm just really proud of it. It's um, it's an honest record. It's a hopeful record. Um, it's still a you know a folk record. Um, you know, I if people are willing to to listen to it, I hope they um I hope they're able to connect with it, and I hope I get lots of fucking money from it. <laughs> and get that yacht. Get the yacht. Yeah. <laughs> well, we have so too, William. Thank you so much for taking your time to speak to us, and um, we're really looking forward to your album in 2014. And please come back and see us when you're on tour in Europe again. I shall. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>